They say that even a second is an eternity in Formula One, so going four winter months with no racing at all has seemed a very long time indeed. Ha! Crofty, how do you think we feel in 2020? So F1 2020 comes out in just about a month's time, so logically I thought today on the channel we'd go ahead and play F1 2016. Now I know, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, why on earth, Arif, should we be playing F1 2016 with a month to go till the brand new game? Well, I'll tell you why, okay? If you did not play this game back in the day, this is Genesis, okay? This is the game that started off R&D in the career mode. So that's why today we're playing F1 2016, because we have to pay respects to this game. Because if it wasn't for this game, we wouldn't have got any sort of R&D system. So if you think about it, we should really be calling F1 2016, the daddy of it. Oh, that sounds horrendous. No, but F1 2016 deserves our respect. I have fond memories of it, um, you know, back to F1 My Driver seasons four to six. Um, and, you know, like I said, it was the very first time we had any inkling of an actual upgradable system. You know, we, it was the first game we could actually take a bottom car and upgrade it to the top or take a top car and upgrade it more to the top. Although, as we saw last year, when I was playing all these older F1 games on the run-up to F1 2019, there were plenty of issues that we will definitely highlight in this video. And we're going to start off with the cover of this game, because there's only one word for it. Scary! What on earth is that face for Sergio Perez? It, his eyes literally peer into your... He looks like he's meant to be on a register. And as usual, as you might notice with all the Formula 1 games, the Ferrari is always at the front, despite Despite this year being horrendous for Ferrari, do we remember the German Grand Prix, ladies and gents? The one where Sebastian Vettel was nowhere near anyone and his team actually said, let's pit now to get an undercut and he questioned back, an undercut on what? There's literally no one to undercut. This was not a good year for Ferrari. Um, I, I suppose actually in that kind of way, it's really great we're playing this game because Ferrari fans, you'll watch this video and you'll get a taster of what you're going to be playing in F1 2020 because I'm sure the Ferrari car won't be great in that one either. Fair enough, register watch let's uh, dive into this game and uh, have a look at career and this game actually had a career mode because you remember in descending order 2015 did not the predecessor did not so in retrospect this game could have had the worst career mode in f1 history and it would have been an improvement over last year's game and to be fair to them they did deliver like i said it was the first game with r&d and uh, and the rest is history all right so in terms of career mode options then we got short weekend full and then customize so I'll, I'll i'll go with that let's uh let's uh let's lower the bar as per usual with these i think yeah what well, this this seems like a the correct decision for us for the casual person that that seems like me it's not like i played every single f1 career there has to be and of course i actually forgot this was also the first game where they had any of this customization for your character if you like avatar because they didn't need an f1 2015 because you couldn't even make any sort of character here so these were the very first faces i'm trying to remember which one i actually chose when i actually first made this it might have been this one or the or this one because they're the only two that have my skin color on it. Helmet selection also came back into the game for the first time and uh, I'm not gonna lie, it hasn't really gotten a lot better since F1 2016. We're being completely, frankly honest here. Exposing Codemasters a little bit there. Um, yeah, they, they, they definitely need to try a little bit harder in this customization department, but I'm just gonna go with, uh, this one looks pretty funky. Let's go with that. Uh, we can change the colors. I'll just leave it at that. It's not the most important thing. And uh, in terms of country, um, well, we've had a habit of just choosing some random country in these sort of, you know, more kind of uh, casual videos, I guess, of these career mode playthroughs. So what should we go for today? You know what? There's only one flag we can go for. The North Korean flag. I mean, who doesn't want to drive for North Korea? Much like Danny Kofia has the pressure of Putin, you know, watching him during the races, I'll just have, you know, casually Kim Jong-un on his, on his back in North Korea watching me on, and if I do a poor job, well... Uh, I'm probably not gonna go back to North Korea. <laughs> Race number, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for 99. The logic being, I feel like Kim Jong-un would like me to have 99. It's the biggest number there. I think that was actually the logic Sutil uh, uh, had when he chose this race number when he was back in F1, I think last time was 2013. I think that was his logic there. Um, very weird logic to be when it comes to a race number. I feel like there's a bit more sentiment behind a race number than I just want the biggest one available. But there you go. I feel like that's something that we need to do to to represent Kim well. And name, as 
you guys know, the usual when we do these videos, player and one, what a name, what a famous one, and then uh, the, the abbreviation will be, you know, because it's, you know, it's player one. All right, team selection then. Need to select a team for our career. We've got Mercedes, Ferrari, Williams Racing, and they've actually predicted them dropping the rocket sponsorship back in 2016, so fair play to them. This was the year the Red Bull overall took like bin bags when the drivers were up there spraying champagne on themselves because the, the blue just turned black, and then for some reason, I don't know what it is, they still can't do it. They can't seem to manufacture overalls for these drivers that are actually actually fitting well to them. I actually think Sebastian Vettel's one was horrendous this year. Like, the actual collar itself was down to his chest. Sahara Force Mercedes, I mean, India is uh, is still in the game. Got Scuderia Torosso without their uh, rebrand. Well, two rebrands, of course, the livery-wise and then also to Alpha Tauri for 2020. McLaren Honda. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's, it's good, to, it's good, to, it's not good to hear that name again. I've actually got PTSD from that year. If you haven't followed me for a while, you won't know I was a Jensen Button fan back in the day. Still my all-time favorite F1 driver, so this wasn't exactly a happy time of F1 for me to be supporting him. Uh, yeah. Bruno Sport Formula 1, they, they, um, they haven't actually improved, uh, really that much since, uh, since 2016, we're being real, so, um... Good job there. The team expectations are win the championship in four seasons plus. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what a great joke. So, Alba Formula 1 pre-Alfa Romeo day, so uh, I can't really rep Alfa Romeo Racing as I should be doing contractually, so it's, it's just Sauber, and then Manor Racing as well, obviously. I'm sure Manor still has a nice little soft spot in a lot of our hearts when it comes to Formula 1. But in terms of who I'm going to drive for, uh, like, a, it's it's got to be McLaren Honda, not because I want to make some Honda jokes, which I will, because obviously I've, I've, got, I've got to drive alongside my main man, Jensen Button. So sorry, Fernando, once again, an early retirement for you, just like an F1 My Driver, and we can begin our career. Right, we're obviously big professionals of career mode here on this channel, so we'll be moving this all the way down to five laps. One shot quality, that seems about right. Um, Assist-wise, I'm on a controller, so I, I don't know what I'm going to really need to survive this. At the moment, our career score modifier is it a whopping 0%, and it will be staying there. <gasps> oh, here we go. The old cutscenes. The very first time we got cutscenes in an F1 game for career. Look how clapped it looks. Hi, I'm Emma Jenkins. All I'm saying is, Emma, she's got a major glow up in comparison to where she started in 2016. That, that's, it just, it's true. I'll be working to get you the best deal in the boardroom. I assume that all sounds fine. Oh my God, what is that smile? <laughs> That's, that's, uh, I found someone else to join Sergio Perez on the register. Well then, good luck this season, and I'll catch you later. And I'm sure the cops will catch you later as well. Here we are then, though, new contract, and uh, what, what, I forgot McLaren, wow, McLaren had some really gopping team gear. What is that? Why is, why have they got the intern just to do some random black to white gradient? I've completely forgot, wow, okay. Here we are then, uh, this was... The very first kind of paddock situation we got since 2016. You can see how far we've actually come. You know, it really does show how much the graphics have come along. Like, you don't really notice it. It's kind of almost like when you play retro games, like really proper retro games. You always have a better picture in your mind. And it's the same thing even with games from a couple of years ago. I always feel like they used to look better to me. But now we, we obviously don't know any better Like at the time. But now we do. And wow. This is such a simplified laptop menu. Look at it. <laughs> if you'll notice closely, um, this loading screen from F1 2016 is the exact same one from 2015, just with the numbers swapped out. So really going that extra mile, as you can see. You're cutting corners and running wide. What are your thoughts on? Did he say cutting corners on purpose? Because I'm playing the game. Did, was that a direct threat, Crofty? Oh, there we go. There we are, proudly from North Korea, repping. All right, it's garage tutorial time, and uh, the, the garage tutorial is being run at literally 2 FPS, that is. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. I've been playing these games for ages. System checks are okay so we can get underway whenever you like. Oh, there's our engineer. I don't know if it... Did he say his name was Jeff? I can't remember. They, have they all been Jeff since 2016? And here we go. This was the first time we had these practice programs, and we only have these uh, four to go through. And one thing that hasn't changed is the engineer interrupting me every single time I'm trying to talk. But yeah, very simple. I, I say we just do it. Let's. I, I, I hate doing them right now in the current games, but let, let's go ahead and do it. And try and see if we can uh, get to grips with this game once again. Here we go. Oh, look, look at that. You know what? 
Uh, the graphics hold up. I said this for F1 2015, but even more so, F1 2016 was probably the old, the, the oldest F1 game that still holds up to this day pretty damn well. Like, I know the lighting is a little bit unrealistic compared to what we have now, maybe, in comparing it, but I think the actual crispness of the image and everything, I rate it. I, I do. All right, here we go. Fast it. Oh, and that is... A horrendous understeer. Where was the front end? Was that how bad the McLaren was back in 2016? It's all coming back to me now. I'm getting Vietnam style flashbacks of how bad this car was. And oh my god. What is the turning on this? I don't know if it's getting used to the 2016 downforce or if this car this game was so bad on a controller, but this is Oh my god. This is like driving something. This is like driving a car through jelly. It really is. It's got no turning. I've failed every. I've, I've got two purples, but I'm failing most things here. Come on, can we get this right? Send it in. Oh, yes! Purple, ignore that off track. I maybe said this in previous times we've played older F1 games, but this now just feels so slow compared to the, uh, the current cars we have. Like, you don't realize how much downforce it. That wasn't even a big one, Jeff! Well, you know what the saying is, start as you mean to go on, and uh, I guess that's uh, a sign of things to come. It's not been a great first outing, lads, I can't lie. I think Kim might be a little bit angry at me, you know? I think he's already, I think he's already starting to deploy the missiles. All right, here we go then, this is it. Like I said, the very first time we saw R&D introduce is the main man, R.I.P. He's no longer in the modern F1 games, but here we go. Good to meet you. My name's Chris, and I'll be working with you as your Chief of Vehicle Development. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, good sir. I know I know my way around the laptop. I'm an absolute veteran at R&D, but you know what? I, I'm going to say I prefer this, this guy to the one we have now. He just seems a bit more serious, you know? Like, the, the guy that you get introduced to in F1 2019, he kind of looks like a guy you can have a beer with in the paddock, not someone you go to to improve your F1 car. Now we're met in the new paddock scene here, the motorhome of McLaren, um, and you can see Anthony Davidson and Crofty talking there. I'm sure they're discussing new ways they can sound even more robotic in the cutscenes to come. But here we are then. Oh, this is... Oh, this is this is nostalgia here. This has actually hit me in my feels. I forgot about this. Like, there was no R there was no tree. It wasn't an R&D tree. It was like an R&D leveler or something like, like just like columns here so you could just go up the order on engine power fuel efficiency chassis weight downforce and drag that was it that was the only areas of the car you could improve were drag downforce chassis weight fuel efficiency and engine power so no you know ers like i said no reliability upgrades reliability wasn't much of a factor in this game in terms of improving that nor was things like changing the chassis weight distribution or the brakes for example, for the chassis side of things, and the aero was just pure downforce. Obviously, there were little different bits to it, but uh, it was all the kind of, you know, same thing in one different column compared to drag, whereas now you have drag and downforce in the same aerodynamics tree. So it was, uh, yeah, a lot more stripped down, but this was the foundation of what we have right now. And then we have progress history like we have now, obviously no data as of yet. Um, but yeah, let's select an upgrade here. So we've got uh, the McLaren. Obviously, I think we need engine power. To be honest, <laughs> having the McLaren on the in 2016. So let's go for let's go for that one. I, oh no, I can't actually go for that one because I can't afford it. Typical Honda. I can't upgrade the engine power because I can't afford that. This Honda out. I'm gonna go for the next best thing, chassis. What I feel that'll help the McLaren Honda. I think so. Develop that. So there we go. I forgot about this. We could listen to a voicemail. Let, let's let's listen. This has got to be a very important one. That the game's telling me to listen to it. Incredibly disappointing. That was not useful at all. All right, here we go. One shot qualifying time. My time to shine and put this McLaren where it deserves to be. In P1, that is. And, oh, no, nah, and, uh, and that's, 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 that over. Just going to do a Fernando Alonso here. May as well. There we go. Oh, I failed at doing Fernando Alonso. How have my, t how have my tires stayed intact? How is that actually possible? Do you reckon we could still put in a good lap time? I, I, I reckon we could still put in a decent one. You know what? I just realized, actually, this is exactly how the McLaren Honda looked when Jensen was going out on the formation lap in 2015. This is how slow he was going. Ah, what? I ran out of time. Oh, my God. No. What? I thought I was going to be able to finish the lap. <laughs> I was so slow going around the lap. They just had enough of me. Oh, no, no. 
Oh, no time. We got beaten by Jolie and Palmer. Oh, Kim Jong-un's going to have my head here. He's, he's really not going to be happy with this. Yeah, I can't lie, guys. I don't think we did very well uh, collecting resource points out of that session. Um, yeah, I think we may have some improvements to make. They say that even a second is an eternity in Formula One. So going four winter months with no racing at all has seemed a very long time indeed. Ha! Crofty, how do you think we feel in 2020? It's been half a year! Now here we are then on the grid ready to do the business. Our engineers there on the right discussing very intently, I'm sure, of uh, our winning strategy today. Oh yeah, yeah, mate. I'm seeing the same thing in the numbers. Yeah, are you, are you seeing that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucked. He's he's not he's not getting anywhere, boss. 20, 20 second blows. Here we go. Engaging the clutch. Five red lights to the Australian Grand Prix, and we're on the way. And it's actually a good start. Oh my god, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to getting good starts. I'm too, too used to 2019 going backwards. Here we go. Down into the Magnuson. Harsh break. Oh, where's that? Oh, Palmer's come out of nowhere. Oh no, I've been soft spun. The Sauber, the Sauber's always coming through, no matter what F1 game it is. The Sauber's always out to get us. We're down to 20th place. Magnussen took us. Palmer with a massive dive, but we'll come back. Here we go. Oh, come on. Yes, we've got Palmer. Mission accomplished. Right, come on. Feed it through. Yes, look at this. We're absolutely battering them, lads. This is the demolition. Look at it, we're god tier. Forget about the fact it's on very easy. We'll skip over that fact. So yeah, in terms of the actual driving and stuff, there was uh, obviously the usual, you know, fuel, front brake bias, differential, and all that malarkey. But no ERS still in this game. As they said, it was, uh, I think at the time, they tried to, like I said, fl you know, pretend like there was, and they just it just wasn't, like, available to us for to use. Uh, but in essence, there just wasn't ERS, like, in the physics engine. It just wasn't there, I don't think, as we, oh, God, spark away. And, oh, surprise. I was make contact with Roman Grosjean and then send one down the inside of the line in the manor car. Yeah, oh god, we got him, we got him. Oh, we spent it. Oh, we sent Gro <laughs> we sent Grosjean into a spin. You know what? If anything, this just shows. Look how realistic this game is. Look, Grosjean span it and he's and he's in the mud. Although that this although although I want to point out this crash actually just shows off how horrendous the side pod glitch used to be on this game. Look how sensitive that is that side pod is. Literally his tire touches it and then he just rebounds and ricochets. That's like worse than the contact engine from like FIFA 12. Right, we're still not caught up to Jensen Button. He's done a fabulous job so far. I think he's two two cars ahead of us there. I still maintain I love the Honda sound. Uh, from from this era of F1, like 2015, 2016, when the Honda engines didn't used to be as smooth sounding and basically used to sound a bit broken. I still maintain actually the best sounding uh, V6 engine is th these kind of broken Honda engines as we now absolutely do button on the inside there. Up into P10 in the points. He's going to come back at us though a little bit here. He's gaining. He's gaining. Oh, I'm going to go defensively on the inside, but we should get this. No, oh, no, 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 no. Hold it. Hold it, hold it, we're good, we're good. No, he's come back. Oh, what what racing this is. He's actually got us. This is actually wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff with JB. Going to squeeze him out. Uh, there we go. Slow the thing down. And we got it. Right, we can mince Massa here. Oh, beautiful. Great exit. Great exit. Oh, there we go. Goodbye, Sonny Jim. DRS activated. We're going to get Sergio Perez. Yeah, oh, look, oh, look, the, 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 the racing point's already silver in this game. They, they already predicted how much of a copy there'd be of the Mercedes 2020 car. Oh, and he's, ta he's taking me out! Look, J Perez, just because I accurately said something, all right, about your team and your car doesn't mean you need to take me out and my teammate, apparently. But am I wrong or am I wrong, okay? That racing point, it, it's got silver on it. It's pretty much already predicting the future. It's got the Mercedes silver on it. Right, goodbye, Hulkenberg. Come on, around the outside. Oh, uh, it's going to be a tight squeeze. Oh, come on. Yes. What a move this is. Oh, very easy. All right, what a move. Oh, he's coming back at us. Oh, what? Is this how slow the Honda engine was in this game? Oh, my God. I must have blocked out my memory because I had such bad memories of it doing myself when I first played this game in career mode. When this game came out, it's how slow this car was in a straight line. Oh, my God. No, re no wonder I actually hated this career mode by the time I finished season two of it because I think I was just sick and tired of how slow this car was. It literally is this car. I, don't, I, think, any, I think any other car in this game would actually feel a lot better on a controller, but this car just feels so sluggish out of every single corner. It's 
It's like step on the throttle and nothing happens for about 15 seconds. Here we go. 131. One with the fast up the Grand Prix. We're doing this, remember, for everyone back in North Korea. We're doing this for Kim Jong-un as he's trying to go down the inside of Bottas. Doesn't work. The straight line speed is literally non-existent. But the dive bomb down the inside. And now we find ourselves just behind Sebastian Vettel. Because this is how bad the Ferrari was in 2016. I mean, look at it. I mean, the car was pretty gopping as well. But the performance, non-existent. Although saying that, I've just... Oh, oh no! Well, that's that. That's not ended well. That's that's quite the opposite of what I wanted to do. And now we're and now we're in the mud. Now we're and we're oh, and I need to take someone out there. Oh my god, the lack of turning is abysmal. No, oh did no. Oh my and and we really have we really have gone on. As we started. And with that, it's back to the safe house bunker. Because that's the only place I'm going to be safe from Kim Jong-un's missiles now. And much like the F1 2020 game, we see Lewis Hamilton winning the Grand Prix. Shock horror there. So guys, I think that's going to conclude my foray into F1 2016 career mode. If you guys did enjoy the video, then be sure to smash the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly fallen content. I've been Ariva. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.